Hi guys, welcome back to another video and today I'll be comparing two entry level racing wheels. So the Logitech G29 against the PXN V10 and hopefully it will give you enough information in deciding which one to go for. So I'll be showing you around the wheel bases, wheels and pedals, testing each one out to see how they compare against each other and giving you any pros and cons. Details for all the items I'll be showing in today's video are in the description below, including purchasing links. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and and hitting the bell icon to get notified on my next release. Let's take a quick look at what you get in the packaging. The PXN V10 comes with a wheelbase, wheel, pedals, a shifter and mounting clamps used to either mount on a table or a sim cockpit. The bundle is priced at just under £290 or $280. Onto the Logitech G29, which comes with a wheelbase, which has the wheel attached, pedals, but no shifter, as this is sold separately. The G29 bundle on Amazon is under £200 or $300. On Logitech G's website, it's £350 or $300. And the Logitech shifter is priced at $60 on the Logitech G website, and on Amazon it's priced at £40. But there are some deals out there where you can get the shifter as part of a bundle. Let's start by taking a closer look at the wheelbases. The PXNV10 wheelbase looks very much like a direct drive wheelbase, but it works with a dual motor consisting of gears and cogs, and this provides the force feedback when racing. You get 3.2 newton meters of torque. It's made from plastic and has a metal plate underneath. The finish is matte black with a red stripe across the top and a glossy black plastic ridge. There's a quick release system made of plastic, which is pretty good and you can easily attach and remove the wheel with no problems. Just line up the plastic nib and then screw in the wheel. It has connection ports on the back of the wheelbase for your shifter, pedals, power adapter and a USB cable port. You also have a switch to change from 270 degrees to 900 degree rotation on the racing wheel. There's also a port to connect your gaming controller. So you have to connect your Xbox or PlayStation controller for this to work. As without it, it won't work. Over to the Logitech G29, it doesn't have a quick release system as the wheel is attached to the wheelbase and the clamps are underneath, helping you to attach it to a table. Plus there's holes underneath allowing you to attach to a sim cockpit. The connection points are underneath and these are for the pedals, shifter, power input and a cable with a USB-A connection allowing you to connect it to your console or PC for it to work. Now the nice thing here is you don't need to plug it into a gaming controller. It also has dual motors consisting of gears and cogs that provide 2.1 Newton meters of peak torque. Both are easy to set up and provide good stability on a sim cockpit or mounted on a table. Onto the wheels. The PXN wheel has a shallow D-shaped design covered with stitched synthetic suede material that feels quite nice and grips well and has a red center stripe. In the middle, you have a plastic frame with all the control buttons. The wheel is small in size, measuring 270 millimeters across and 249 millimeters in height and is quite light in weight. The paddles on the back are made from metal and consist of two paddle shifters which have a clicky sound to them and underneath you have clutch shifters which don't make any sound. One thing I did notice when pressing down the paddle shifters to go up or down a gear, there was a bit of empty space when you push down partially. This is because there's a gap between the paddle shifter and switch. So for example, when you push down initially, it feels a little bit disengaged like nothing's happening until you push down all the way. This isn't a biggie as it does the job as expected without any issues onto the G29 wheel which is fixed to the wheelbase and has a 900 degree lock to lock rotation. It's covered with hand stitched leather, has a blue center stripe and measures 260 millimeters in diameter. It has 14 buttons, which includes the PlayStation button and a D-pad on the wheel, plus a 24 point selection dial and a plus and minus button for further adjustments for tuning your driving preferences. There's an LED indicator position just above the center of the wheel. The wheel looks and feels good and again, isn't very heavy. The two paddle shifters at the back are stainless steel and have a nice clicky sound to them. Overall the look of the G29 wheel does look and feel more premium than the V10 with the hand stitched leather and the stainless steel paddle shifters. But the main difference in functionality is that the V10 has two clutch shifters, something that the G29 doesn't have. Next onto the pedals, they both have a three pedal system. PXN pedals are mounted on a plastic board with a metal heel and has metal pedal faces on each of the pedals. Underneath there's rubber pads to prevent it slipping and holes to mount it to a sim cockpit. All the pedals are spring loaded, which can be adjusted to increase the tension by tightening the plastic knobs. But even with the knobs tightened to the maximum tension, the pedals still don't have much resistance and I can easily push down each one with my hand. The G29 pedals are stainless steel, which are mounted onto a plastic board 
board. Underneath you have carpet grippers and rubber pads to prevent it from slipping. Plus it can also be mounted onto a SIM cockpit using the holes provided underneath. All pedals are spring loaded, but the brake pedal has an extra bit of rubber as well as a spring, which makes it a lot stiffer. And what this means is that the first 50% feels pretty easy, but once you get past this, it does get a lot stiffer and you do need to use a lot more force when pressing down, giving it more realistic braking experience than the V10 brake pedal. And finally, taking a look at the shifters. The V10 comes with a shifter in the package, which is made entirely of plastic with rubber around the knob. It's a H pattern shifter with six plus one gears. And to put it into reverse, you press down and place it into the sixth gear. It has two buttons on the top to control the parking brake and the other for truck simulator games to engage the higher gears. It doesn't have any pre-drilled holes underneath, but it does come with a plastic clamp to mount both onto a table and onto a SIM cockpit or wheel stand. The Logitech G shifter is covered with hand stitched leather and has a clamp to mount it onto a table plus holes at the bottom to mount onto a SIM frame. It's compatible with the G920 and G923 so it's not just limited to the G29. It also has a H pattern with 6 plus 1 gears and the reverse gear is separate. It has a solid steel gear shaft and both shifters are very similar in build quality and performance when racing. Functionality wise, both the wheels work on a PC, but the PXN V10 works with a PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S together with a PC, but it doesn't work on a PlayStation 5, which is a big disappointment. The G29 supports the PlayStation 3, 4 and 5, but not an Xbox. If you want Xbox support, you'd have to get the G920 or G923 Xbox version, or you could get the Brook Resolution 2, which is an adapter that allows you to use the G29 with an Xbox. When you're using the G29 on a PC, you'll need to install the Logitech G Hub software, which lets you adjust the settings on the wheel and pedals, and also lets you reassign the controls. With the PXN, it doesn't have any software to use on your PC, but there is a mobile app available on iOS and Android that lets you remap the buttons on the wheel and import game settings, which is quite convenient as you can make changes while gaming on both a PC and a console. Now on to testing out both these wheels. I've set up the V10 on my Next Level Racing Elite Sim cockpit, and like the G29, the V10 goes through a calibration when connected with the wheel going back and forth. Racing with the V10, it generally performs pretty well, giving you a good amount of force feedback from the track and even when going around corners. The wheel isn't bad at all and feels good with it being responsive when driving. The buttons are all easy to reach and the paddle shifters work as expected, but feel a little bit cheaper than the Logitech ones. The shifter isn't bad at all, feels good and solid, even though it's clamped to the cockpit and not screwed in. The only disappointment is the pedals, as they all feel the same with hardly any resistance on the brake pedal, even with the springs tightened to the maximum. Moving on to G29 and the experience is good with an ample amount of force feedback from the wheel. You can feel any bumps, knocks, together with feedback going around corners. But in all honesty, I didn't feel any major difference in the force feedback from the G29 compared to the V10, even though it has 2.1 Newton meters of torque. Both feel very much the same. The shifter is good, but I do prefer the PXN shifter than the Logitech one, as there's slightly more functionality, as it has two buttons on the top. But in terms of performance, both feel very similar, if not the same. The pedals are where you'll notice the most significant difference between the two, as the G29 has a spring and dampener in the brake pedal, making the resistance feel a lot better giving a more realistic feel when racing and you can certainly feel the difference when pressing down. So in summary both the Logitech G29 and the PXN V10 are good entry-level racing wheels that are perfect if you're on a limited budget. Positives wise I like the fact that PXN gives a shifter as part of the bundle plus it has a couple of additional options more than the Logitech shifter. The Logitech shifter is compatible with the G29, G920 and the G923 whereas the PXN comes with an adapter allowing you to use it independently on a PC. The V10 works with a PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S together with a PC but not a PlayStation 5 which is a big disappointment. Whereas the G29 is compatible with a PlayStation 3, 4 and a PlayStation 5 together with a PC and if you wanted to play on an Xbox you could buy 
the G920 or the G923 Xbox version. Or you could even get the Brook Resolution 2, which is an adapter that allows you to use it with an Xbox. The V10 also has a quick release system, which raises the question whether PXN will be introducing different racing wheels for the wheelbase, as there's no additional ones at the moment. On the G29, as it's fixed, there isn't any options for this. But if you wanted to change the wheel, then there are some third party mods out there to change it to an F1 or GT wheel. But it does involve some effort to do. The biggest positive for the G29 is the pedals where the brake has much more resistance whereas on the V10 all the pedals feel the same and there isn't much difference even when the adjustment spring is tightened. The force feedback on both is very similar even though the PXN says the V10 gives 3.2 Newton meters of torque but you don't notice that much of a difference. Personally, if I had to choose between the two, I'd go for the Logitech G29 as the build quality felt better on all the different components, especially the brake pedal, plus it's compatible with the PlayStation 5. So there you have it. You come to the end of another video and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Details for all the products I've mentioned today are in the description below, including purchasing links. And let me know in the comments which wheel you think is better. And if you're still here, drop a racing wheel in the comments as it's nice to see who's made it to the end of my video. And if you enjoyed today's video, check out my full review of the best mods for the Logitech G29. You can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and Twitter. If you're new to the channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to be notified of my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.